So the annual Spotify rap dropped recently, once again giving everyone the idea that people are really interested in your music tastes. They're not. As unfortunate as that is. As if there's some validation to be gained from telling everyone that you, in fact, did listen to music that you like. I promise you, when I see someone Spotify rapped posted on their story, if I don't know the artist, I don't go, oh, hey, let me go listen to that guy. I bet he's really good. Nah, nah, I don't do that at all. It's just... Want a break from the ads? Don't worry, I can make fun of this. I posted mine too. I'd show it to you, but my wife has since hijacked my Spotify and the results are no longer entirely accurate to me. Love you, wife. But as a consolation prize, here's a list of my favorite artists if you're interested and or want to judge me harshly. I don't care. But it really got me thinking about my music tastes and because I'm a big old nerd, it got me thinking about video game music. In previous years, my top genre would be video game soundtracks or video game related music. We're talking the Undertale soundtrack, the Skyrim soundtrack, the Minecraft soundtrack, and many other games that don't have original soundtracks, and it was all just real music that I wouldn't have listened to otherwise without that game. Think Rock Band, or Beat Saber, or Thrillville, if, if that pleases you. And even before all that, in middle school I was listening to artists like Try Hard Ninja and Tobuscus on YouTube sing songs about Minecraft and other video games that I, to this day, have not played. And don't lie to yourself, we've all unironically listened to Tobuscus at one point or another. And back in the day, I used to have a Minecraft songs playlist on YouTube. It has since been deleted, so... Sorry guys, you don't get to sip from the finest selection of Minecraft originals and parodies curated by yours truly. tastes like cringe. And while I still listen to these songs on occasion, because I'm very nostalgic and I always find myself going back to even some of the cringy stuff that I used to listen to, my musical taste has grown far beyond the realm of video games out into the world of real music. And that's a term I want to delve into, real music, because I feel like throughout all my time growing up, that's a term that was used against me a lot. Whether it was an original composition, a soundtrack, or a parody, Everyone labeled what I was listening to as not real music. And I'll be honest, it kind of hurt. I'm out here, a poor little nerdy boy in high school, trying to find out who I am while having very little exposure to what they would call real music. Of course I would turn to video game soundtracks and, and weird quirky stuff like Game Grumps remixes. I didn't have anything else. Except like contemporary Christian music. And while I do like some of it, a teenager needs some angst. He needs something upbeat, something about the other stuff in his life that he cares about. My music taste was out there, I just hadn't found it yet. Instead, I'm listening to things that I know, things that are funny, songs that I can relate to, which at the time was just about Minecraft and Weird Al. I listen to a lot of the Star Wars soundtracks, and I know that they're movie soundtracks first, but if you watched my childhood games video, you'd know that I played a lot of LEGO Star Wars and Star Wars Battlefront, which really gave me the appreciation for those songs. They might as well have been video game soundtracks to little younger, little boy me that played, played those games, you know? The point is, when you hear a good song, one that is iconic and sticks in your head, you want to hear it again. It creates a certain feeling inside that makes your dopamine increase and your skin get goosebumps in a way that only music can. Hey, Ben, just wondering how that script's coming. I'll come back. I'll come back later. So let's talk icons. Mozart, Koji Kondo, Grant Kirkhope, Nickelback, the homeless guy outside the Waffle House. What do these people all have in common? They're all icons, specifically their music. And if there's one thing you can use to describe video game music as, it's iconic. Of course, all of you watching are more than likely gamers, so I don't need to tell you that. Play any song from any Mario game to a non-gamer, and I guarantee they will at least have heard it before. You know the song, your grandma knows the song, even your dog, which is only old enough to have seen the birth and death of Overwatch 2, knows the song. These songs are iconic, not only because they're catchy and get you in the mood for whatever game you're playing, but because they are always playing. 
You can hear the same song loop hundreds and hundreds of times and never notice it because it's hidden in the background, fleshing out the world that you're more focused on running around in. Now, it's not a hard rule, but the most iconic songs will likely be the first ones you hear, and any song that plays during a boss fight or somewhere with plot significance. I mean, just check Spotify. But why? Because that's where you spend the most of your time. Plus, those songs are arguably the most important ones in a game. The opening song, the one in the first area of the game, draws you in, sets the mood, and gives you an idea of the world you're in. It's your first exposure to that universe and what's to come. Your mind is open, learning the controls, the rules, your expectations, the language of the game. Your wide-eyed excitement for the beginning of this journey burns that song into your head. And as for boss fights, well, what other character in a game would have a more badass song to play while they kick you back to the main menu over and over and over again? You're gonna hear their song a lot. Now think about this for a moment. Music is perhaps one of the most fascinating art forms. Imagine sounds, vibrations in the air, moving at different frequencies in a pattern that gives you a physical, mental, and emotional response every time you hear it. And it's incredible how much of an effect music can have on the listener. And I would argue that video game music has an even greater effect on the listener than any other kind. Sure, all music plays on your emotions by conveying feelings through their melodies and somehow is ubiquitous across all humanity. We can all agree when a song sounds depressing and when a song sounds hype. The difference between a song in, say, a movie and a song in a video game is that you're watching events unfold in a movie, but in a game, you are directly involved in those events unfolding. The music is describing you and what you're doing. I know everyone has praised Undertale to death, and it's kind of become a cringy thing to talk about given the more extreme sides of the fan base. but I don't think there's a better example of what I'm trying to talk about. Say what you want about the game or the fan base, but you can't deny that the music is very well composed. Through the use of motifs and theme and variation, the music nerds are really going to like that one. Toby Fox was able to take how you feel in a particular story beat, remix it, and throw it back at you later, causing you to feel twice the emotions. The emotions from the first time you heard that song, and then the emotions you're feeling now. The secret to Undertale's music is that a majority of it is exactly the same. The same melodies for particular characters or areas are interwoven to show, in a musical manner, the culmination of that part of the game. Look up All Undertale Music is Connected, and you will find a bunch of videos comparing the songs and pointing out where melodies are used and reused. Could this be Toby Fox being lazy? Probably. But it also creates a soundtrack that is tightly packed together and has more meaning because of it. Can I talk about one shot here real quick? If you like gripping emotional stories, puzzles, choice, and meta elements, then one shot is the game for you. I love this game to death and I've only played it through once. I won't spoil any of it for you because it was an amazing experience that after I beat it, I had to just sit there and just take in what I had done. It actually brought me to tears. The biggest thing I wanna say about it is while I was writing this script, I had video game music playing to get me in the mood and, and help me think, allowing myself to feel what I felt when playing those games. I put on the music to one shot and even though I only played the game through one time, back in 2018, I was feeling every single emotion I had felt. I was remembering moments and experiences, choices I had made. The game does an amazing job of connecting you back to the world and making you feel responsible for what happens. As much as I want to go back and play it again, I don't think I will. There are some story reasons that prevent me from going back. It is called One Shot, after all. Like a bittersweet memory of something you can never go back to, that's what gaming music does. That's why it means so much to us. If a newly released Taylor Swift song can bring all the white girls to tears, then damn it, so can a well-crafted song in a game surrounded by emotionally gripping story that you poured your time, effort, and heart into. That's where your memories lie. Now, I am required by law to talk about this next part included in the term video game music, and that is, of course, music about video games. 
parodies, original songs, remixes made from the dialogue of people playing the game in a Let's Play. These are all also technically video game music, albeit a different kind. Going back, a lot of the Minecraft stuff did not age well. YouTubers who can barely sing, lyrics that have the complexity of a one-colored Rubik's Cube, the subject matter that equates to extending a 30-second task into a four-minute song. The older the video, the worse it gets. Uh, gameplay instead of animation, ugly texture packs, shaders making the game run at 15 frames a second. It's terrible. Sure, the songs themselves were catchy, but that's only because they were parodies. Parodies nuts. I guess my biggest issue with songs like this is that all the skill and effort in creating a good song was already done for them. They just had to remake the song with no blocks and change the lyrics. Like, yeah, I listened to them and watched the videos as a kid when I was in middle school, but I'd rather be doing that than what kids are doing these days. Of course, there were some good ones. Revenge and Fallen Kingdom by Try Hard Ninja and Captain Sparkles are still regarded as the best Minecraft parodies around. And there are thousands of other songs about other games as well, ones that aren't parodies. Artists like Dan Bull and The Living Tombstone are ones that immediately come to mind, mostly because I actually listened to them once upon a time. Their songs are genuinely well made and truly encapsulate the feeling of a game. And I also want to mention Starbomb because I love Starbomb. They're funny, they're clever, and they were good before, but once they got my favorite band Twerp for the third album, ooh, oh, even more. All in all, what I really have to say about this part is that those who create, whether it's quality or not, they're just trying to show their love and appreciation of their favorite games. Is it real music? By definition, yes. But I do understand the idea that parodies aren't real music, and I respect it. There's something about hearing a cover or a parody, even if you like it, that just screams, can we please listen to the original version? Please, please, I am begging you. P just play the original. Just, that's all I want to hear. I don't care. Just play the, please, please. Unless you're like younger me and songs like Revenge and Fallen Kingdom were the originals to you. So to bring it full circle, what's the deal with video game music not being labeled as real music? And what would I say to middle school and high school me? Well, first, hey buddy. It, it's okay. You're allowed to like whatever music you like. Your tastes will develop over time. Also, bro, shut the fuck up, okay? Nobody wants to listen to a Minecraft parody or a cover of an already popular song. It's not that they aren't good or that people don't like them, but there's a time and a place. And when people hear a melody they recognize, but it isn't what they are expecting, they are immediately turned off to it. I'm talking instantaneously. Musical taste is subjective anyway, so just relax and enjoy what you enjoy, man. It's cool. And as for the stigma that video game music isn't real, let's be honest, the average person is an NPC. They listen to whatever is popular and whatever the crowd says is good. They don't even have to like it, but they will say they do and listen because it's cool. A lot of people don't even have their own taste. So because of this, they'll call anything outside of that realm bad music without ever having listened to it once. On top of that, if you're a big old nerd like I was in high school, you're already not a cool kid. So the music you listen to is definitely looked down upon, all because it isn't what is popular to listen to. But ultimately, all music is real music. Video game music has just as much emotion and depth as so-called real music. And in some cases, even more. You can have an emotional connection with any song, but there's something really special about how you feel when you start up Halo for the first time and those ethereal notes start to play. When you're wandering Skyrim at night and the calming tones of Secunda begin washing over you. When you get to that boss and his kick-ass tune begins to play and you know that this time is the one. I love video game music. I will never forget how it made me feel for the rest of my life. D dude, play fucking Dragonborn at my funeral. Or Sovngarde, dude, dude. Please, that would be so sick, actually. Um, that's all I have to say about video game music. Thanks for watching, by the way. I really appreciate it. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, that last video, the, uh, the shovelware games, um, that popped off, 
actually did not expect that to happen. Um, so thank you, everybody, so much. I am so pumped about that. Did not see that coming whatsoever. I tried a different style for that video, and I guess it worked. So if you guys want to see more stuff like that, let me know, because I will make it, because I had a lot of fun doing it that way, too. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a lot different. I think people enjoy more seeing the gameplay than just seeing my dumb head talk all the time. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, I just thanks. Thank you everybody for liking and commenting and subscribing. Uh, so yeah, this video obviously was next. Um, and then after this, I'm working on that second part of the, of the shovelware, all the VR titles. I only have five, so it might be a shorter video. Maybe I can throw something in on the end. I don't know. So let me know. Let me know what you think. And I want to hear what your favorite video game songs are in the comments below. I have created a list of like my top 10 favorites. They're in no particular order because there are so many good video game songs that I was having so much trouble figuring out which ones I wanted to keep and which ones I wanted to toss because there's a lot of good ones. And I feel like I tried to do my list as much justice as possible given games that I've played and trying to stick to original compositions for games. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I love these songs. I guess these are the ones I had to narrow it down to. It hurt to do so. Um, so yeah, let me know. Video ideas, I'll take them. Uh, favorite songs, I'll take them. And um, yeah, let's, let's keep going, fellas. Let's keep going. All right, I'll see you all in uh, VR Shovelware. Bye-bye.